Bigger is always better. Biggest rock is best rock. Biggest firm is best firm. Why, it's the American way. Uh, is bigger really the best option? Hello everyone, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and today I want to talk about picking the size of your marine consulting firm. There are many options for you to choose from, ranging all the way from a single person shop up to a multinational corporation. Which is the best option for you? First, a few ground rules. My advice is just one approach. You're going to find many different opinions out there, and I encourage you to seek multiple opinions. What's important is that you combine all of that and form your own opinion. So how do we go about matching the marine consulting firm size with your needs? Step one is starting with reasonable project expectations. I'm going to tell you how to really decide what kind of a size of a firm that you specifically need. And then step two is evaluating your options. You need to do your own estimate about what size of a firm do you think you need. First, you're going to need to start by step one, get a rough estimate of the project size, the scope. Step two, you're going to get your own rough estimate of the project schedule. And then you're going to work out roughly what the price is and use that to figure out roughly the size of the marine firm that you need in terms of the number of people committed to your project. So this is better explained through an example. Let's take a sample project. Let's say that you need a general arrangement drawing done for your ship and that your ship has four decks to it. Okay, so let's first get a rough estimate of the project size. Well, I assume generally that it's one drawing sheet per deck. And as a general rule of thumb, you can assume that a drafter will take one week per sheet to draw up something. Get plus or minus a whole lot of maybes. So, okay, we've got four times one week. So there's 40 hours in a week times four. That gives us 160 hours to do this. Now divide that by 34 hours per week. That gives us 4.7 man weeks. Round up, that gives you five man weeks of total time. That's already including some margin for inefficiencies, project overhead, and everything else. So we've already decided the scope of our project. We now know that we're looking at a commitment of somewhere around five man weeks, but that doesn't decide the schedule. Let's say you're in a hurry you need this whole drawing done in only two weeks flat. Okay, there's our schedule. We need to figure out how to fit five man weeks worth of effort into two weeks of schedule. Divide five man weeks by two weeks. That gives us two and a half, but round up. Now we're talking three drafters minimum, and you're going to probably always need one extra person to organize those drafters, a project manager. We're making progress. We know we need five man weeks of effort. We know we need a firm size that can commit to four people devoted to this project. Let's get an idea of cost. Uh, let's take the low end, assuming $90 per man hour. Okay, times four people over a schedule of two weeks. Two weeks is 80 hours. Great, all of that comes out to, on the low end, $28,800. Now, if we go all the way over to the super primo firm of $200 per man hour, that's at the high end, $64,000. Now I know that seems like a really wide range and I'm being conservative specifically because I don't know what your specific situation is. Apply your own experience to narrow these margins down. But look at how much you've achieved already. You already know roughly the schedule, the size of your project, how many people you're going to need from the firm, and roughly what the cost range should be. So let's start getting quotes from our firms. Now this is where we start asking the question, is bigger always better? And I would say it really depends on the experience of the individual engineers, which is not something guaranteed by company size. First question you need to ask is what are you really getting with this larger company size? You need to consider how your project size ranks next to the kinds of clients and kinds of projects that that big name firm will normally attract. So when you're considering the size of that firm, 
and you hear them tell you that they have a hundred engineers with wonderful credentials to dedicate to you. Think about that in terms of how many of those people are actually working for you. If you only need four people out of those hundred engineers, the other 96 don't count. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to say that big name firms are bad and good, small firms are good. They're, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. So let's compare those two. Now, if you're talking about a larger firm, generally they're going to have better organization in their company structure, in their project management, and that will be a little bit more of a formal organization that is going to come with a slightly higher overhead. All of that extra management takes money. So there's trade-offs either way. As I said, the larger firm can definitely handle the bigger projects. If you need a hundred engineers, talk to a firm that can handle that. But on the other side, if you have a smaller project, that small project will be a lot more important to a smaller firm. You might wonder, well, what about the quality of the work? I mean, if I've got this big firm over here, aren't they going to have a lot better product for me? Mm, I would say no. It all comes down to staff experience and you're going to get a full spectrum of staff experience from either a small firm or a big firm. They're both going to have options ranging all the way from fresh out of school graduate to 30 year marine consulting guru. But do remember, like I said, you are competing with other clients as well for those resources. And that's the important part to remember is that there are trade-offs, pros and cons on both sides. And it's not about finding the perfect consultant. It's about matching your project size to the firm size. Now, if you look at several of the vendors out there like Rolls-Royce and Wurzela, uh, they create physical products. They make engines and propellers, shafts, uh, reduction gears, thrusters. These firms have expanded their expertise. They have gone on to also offer design services. And the way they offer this now is saying that they have turnkey integration. They'll design the entire ship for you. They'll put their components in the ship because they know them like the back of their hand. They'll supply the components to you and it'll be one smooth process from start to finish. Fair disclosure here, I have not directly worked for any of these firms myself, so I can't provide direct experience, but I can provide my experience as an outside perspective. If any of you watching this do have direct experience working with these firms, I'd love to hear what you think because the one thing I worry about is the conflict of interest. Now this vendor makes a lot more money selling you products than they ever will on the design. So they have an incentive to sell you their products. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best product for your project. The second type of specialized firm that I want to talk about is Shipyard Direct Designs. They probably have a couple designs sitting on the shelves ready to go and that they can turn out real quick. But there's a couple disadvantages to that. Most of these boats are highly optimized for a specific application. So moving out of that application means less efficiency. The bright side to all this though, it means if the shipyard is designing it, they know all the detailed design, they're thinking already about how to produce the vessel, you're going to get less problems during the construction phase. And that's going to mean fewer change orders, less cost overruns. So overall, better cost control on the design. So now you know how to pick the right sized marine consulting firm for your project needs. Remember, it all starts with step one, getting a reasonable estimate of expectations. And once you have that, you can look at several different options. I've talked about three specifically, the shipyard direct designs, which I'd say, don't forget the alternative of having a consultant partner with a shipyard. You've got vendor direct designs, which I think that's a personal preference issue. And I'd love to hear personal experiences about that. And then you've also got the question of big name firms compared to smaller firms. And that I'd say there are pros and cons on both sides. And it's not about finding the right solution. It is about understanding the needs of your project, your project size, and matching that to the firm size. You're going to find the best project for, and the best firm for your needs. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.